we left off in the last video by actually carving the clear pocket and waiting for us to start pouring the black. And in this video we're going to start with a pocket that's been cut in the original clear first pocket, which is a pre-coat. And we're going to go through the process of pouring the black. We'll discuss things like uh, the pigments I used, uh, how to get swirling, and how to, how to properly uh, prepare the curing and watch the curing. And we'll move from pouring the black into actually carving the black. And we'll talk about setups for carving the black properly, bit choices. And then we'll end this video by demonstrating the cleaning process of your epoxy carving before your next uh, detailed coat. Besides the scale and everything I have set aside here, the other thing I have set aside is I remembered my acetone for cleanup this time, which if I have a spill or something should make it better. So you should always have a little acetone because that's what it takes to clean up epoxy. So I have my little cheat sheet here. It tells me I need 2.46 ounces of a resin and 2.04 of hardener. Tear it. And I want 2.04 hardener. So now we got our resin and our hardener in. We'll start first the resin in this upstart epoxy will get cloudy. As you can see, I don't know whether you can see that, how it's all cloudy. And then once you've got it mixed enough, it's supposed to clear back up. And that's what I've done, and it continues to work successfully for me. It's been a fairly consistent, good epoxy. I'm making sure I scrape the sides, get a good mixture going, scraping the bottoms, pulling it up, use a little end of the stick to get down into the bottom. It's starting to look pretty clear. I look through the bottom, all I see is a bunch of bubbles. I pull it up and I look through the string and it looks really clear. So now I can start to mix some color in. Now this is the part that can get pretty messy if you're not careful. I'm going to turn off this fan that I've got in my room to try to avoid blowing it around. And I want a pretty dark black. So the first color I'm going to put in is going to be some of this black diamond. It's a beautiful black sparkly pigment. And it will be my predominant pigment. Put a couple scoops in there. And then I'm going to mix it up. Before I start mixing aggressively, I get it going down in there so I don't spread it all over the place. Because this mica powder has a tendency to want to just fly everywhere. All right, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to mix a little bit of this Fire Dots Night in because uh, I like how it contrasts with the dark black and gives just like a little bit of a charcoal. And I'm not going to put that much in there. This is just going to be, this is going to be much less. Just a couple little taps. That's it. And this will, this should help with the swirl effect. I'm going to tap gently right now. Just try to get some of it mixed in. And so this will make it a little more grayish with the swirls. Mix it in nice and thorough. And then for the deep black part of the color, I'm going to put in just a couple drops of the Eco Epoxy liquid pigment. Now I'll put a little a drop or two in. Now I always like to start on a, never know how much is going to come out at a time at first. So I like to start by just putting a drop on this, on this uh, stir stick and putting it in that way. That helps me control a little better how much is going in. I've had a, I've had a problem in the past with accidentally squeezing the bottle too tight and then I get too much of that liquid pigment in there. I think that'll work fairly nice. So now we'll mix it all up. 
Yeah, I think it looks pretty good there. Now we're going to go ahead and pour. Let me put this to the side for just a second. Now put a little torch on it. Just to get it flowing and get the bubbles out. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, so there we are. We've got the initial pour. We're gonna wait about 15 minutes and then we'll come in and we'll pop the bubbles. Uh, start popping the bubbles again. And at that time, I'm gonna start stirring this up. No need to stir it up on this first one. Let it settle in, make sure I've got it all leveling out. And then I'm gonna start uh, stirring it with uh, a toothpick to try to get the swirl. Okay, it's been just a little under 15 minutes. I'm gonna start my first stir. I'm trying to pull some of the gray color up as I move it around, move it up, pull it up from the bottom as Shane was saying. As my first swirl, I'm also going to pop bubbles. See if that light catches it any better. You can see the swirl that's starting to build in there. And I'll come back in 15 minutes and I'll put another swirl and I will also then See if there's any bubbles me popping, and I'll pop them. Uh, so now it's been another 15 minutes or so, so it's time to go ahead and swirl again. So remember Shane talked about mixing up and lifting from the bottom and then swirling. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not sure how much you can actually see in the cameras but I'm swirling and looking at the pattern I'm getting just to make sure that I can see it swirl. And I can feel that it's getting a little thicker. So I might be able to do this one more time. I don't think much more than one more time. At this point, it's been about 40 minutes. I can see bubbles right in here. Of course, I'm going to pop those with the torch. I created some of those bubbles by mixing stuff up. I think it's got a nice swirling pattern. The gray mixed in with the black, the gray, silver, whatever color you want to call it. I'm actually liking how it's mixing up here. I think that looks good. Now when you're doing this, you want to be fast and not in one spot. You don't want to cook the epoxy. I've done it in the past and I know uh, others have reported that their problem with the propane torch or even a heat gun is um, trying to get the bubbles out, they uh, cook the top. If you cook the film, then it's not going to cure right. So it's just a quick blast. Look for bubbles. And if you don't see any obvious bubbles at this point, don't put the torch on it anymore. See if I can move this for a close up for the squirrels. Hopefully you can see those. Hard to tell with this light. What you're looking at here is the next morning after the uh, black pour hardened. You can see the swirls turned out quite, uh, I'll call it prolific. I really like them. I wanted that grayish silver in there and that's the effect I wanted and that's what I got so I'm pretty happy with them. If you explore the actual uh, carving, you'll see on the outside here there's a ring that will turn into being white. 
that's what we had in our design and the white will actually overlap slightly with the black so we have a nice crisp line there we pointed that out when we were talking about how the carving was set up originally and there will be just a 0.05 amount on the outside of the white uh, of clear which will disappear into the uh, wood uh, when we get all finished milling so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out in the next section we'll talk about the actual carving of the white into the black we're at the point now where we're getting ready to carve the white into the black epoxy that's hardened and so we want to make sure that we have the tool pass correctly set up one last time before we actually uh, cut and so and then we'll save them and go cut them so we're looking at white and we want the white depth to be 0.125 not 0.15 remember that 0.15 was only there for the preview we actually have a 15 degree um, V bit we're going to use and then we're going to use two clearances so I want to go through and calculate that with the new depth 0.125 the bits are all correct hit calculate and we'll check how this is going to work so I'm going to run these one at a time and in the way that I would normally run them so the first one I'm going to run is the uh, V bit and I'll preview that okay so we now see what the V bits going to do and uh, so we should expect that when we're done with the V bit that all of the area around the rifle trigger and the sling and stuff will be done this is all going to be carved out with one of the clearance bits also uh, look over here and we can see what's going on with the R the R should be pretty much carved out and then we've got this this is going to probably just be a touchdown of that eighth inch bit um, alright so the next one is the eighth inch bit which is this one right here and we'll preview that and then this is the quarter inch bit which will take the majority of the material out so let me select all those hit close and go view the time frame with the bit change so that that is going to take about it, it says total machining time about four hours so that could be a long machining time but you can see most of that is that V bit because it it's a, a slow V bit process now that I have all the tool path set I'm going to go ahead and save those but one thing I'm going to hit reset preview and I'm going to preview the visible tool paths one more time so what I expect to see and now what I want to do is I just want to check a couple areas for depth to see what I might expect so in this area here uh, I'm not too worried you can see it says 0 0.1 0 0.119 inches in the trigger area it looks like I get down to 0 0.09 0 0.1 inches so that means that's at least a couple mils I'm okay at least a mil I mean uh, a mil is 0 0.03 so if I actually get down to point 0.1 I'm good uh, the other areas where it's going to be close with the bits are between the R right here and so it looks like it's gonna be okay looks like I'll have that connection so as long as these uh, areas here these thin areas of black don't chip out uh, then we should be in good shape there so we're ready to save it to the USB and then go carve it I'm not going to film saving it to the USB. Now we're at the point where we've actually car let the black harden. We've got the wood already set up. I've already got it in the clamps. I've already uh, zeroed it to the point where I'm uh, on this X right here. You recall I've moved the CNC out of the way so you can see it. It's uh, looking nice. I really like the way the swirls turned out in the black. We'll start the white car first with the V bit, which I've already mounted and again we'll zero it on this area here and then uh, we'll 
turn over to the next bit in line will be this quarter inch upcut bit that we'll be using and then we'll be using this eighth inch bit and people often ask what are the feeds and speeds I use the same feeds and speeds that we use with hardwoods so whatever comes with the manufacturer's recommended feeds and speeds that what that's what we'll use on our Laguna controllers Shane and I can manually adjust the feed rate down from what it was set if we think it's going a little too fast and so we usually watch the v-bits to make sure they look like they're cutting at the right speed and this one is set pretty low so it won't be a problem the other thing you'll see me do uh, when i start this toolpath on my laguna controller i can check to see what the g code is saying the speed will be and validate that against what the vectric estimator does the estimator takes some estimated times where the G-code is actually calculated based on what the G-code speeds are going to be, and it's usually much more accurate. So I will do that just before I start to cut, especially the uh, V-cut, since it's such a long cut. It was estimated to be slightly over four hours. The next step will be then to get this uh, cut started. I'll watch for how it's carving. I'll take a quick look at my controller to see how long it actually is going to take and then the next thing you'll see is a quarter inch and then you'll see the eighth inch okay at this point we're actually ready to get started with the carving I won't put my dust shoe on for the V bit initially I probably will stop somewhere after it starts to make a little bit of a mess and then I'll put it on so we can see how it's starting to carve and then I will put the dust shoe on part way through it and turn up the music, uh, turn on the vacuum and it'll get loud and of course I'll put this in fast speed and play some music behind it to try to make it somewhat enjoyable and time lapse. And so let's get started at this point. First thing I want to do is estimate the amount of time that V-bit is going to take. So on my controller I simply hit uh, the menu button and then I go down to the operate file, hit OK. For Laguna users, this may prove useful. I go to check pro time, OK. I go to U-Disk. And my bit that I want to count, uh, I want to check is the white V-bit, 15 degrees. So that's the one, I hit OK. And it tells me that this is, says it's only going to take one hour and 34 minutes, where the actual, uh, Vectric, it said it was going to take four hours, so this will be a lot better. This is usually uh, more accurate, and we'll test it to see what we've got. Once I hit OK, now I want to check pro time of the next toolpath so that I know what that is. And that will be the 25 degree end mill. Hit OK. It says it's only going to go for a little over a minute. Hit OK. Check pro time again, and now I'll go to the... 8-inch uh, end mill, it says it'll take about 8 minutes on the 8-inch end mill. So we've got about 2 hours worth of carving and we're getting ready to start. So one of the things I'm looking at, and I don't know whether you can see it on the video or not at this time, I'm down looking at it, is I'm looking at the consistency of the curl of the material coming out of the epoxy just to see if it looks nice and clean. And it really does. The, uh, the consistency and it's also kind of a not a powder, it's more of a sliver, uh, like is what you expect to see with the right type of chip load. I'll see if we can uh, get a video of it that I can capture with my camera. If the epoxy was still damp, you'd kind of see some curdles coming out, which is not a good sign. So you're looking for that, and if you try to look real close, you can see that they're um, little shavings and not sawdust. 
so that means we're getting uh, good feed and speed and carbon and I think this uh, car will work well. So we just finished the actual V-bit and it took about an hour and 34 minutes according to my stopwatch which was what the estimate was I forgot to scroll down when looking at the screen which was much better than the four hours. Now we're moving on to the quarter inch bit. Okay at this pro time in the process you can see I'm above the X here I've zeroed out I've changed into my quarter inch bit which is my next bit. This one's only supposed to take about a minute to carve according to the file on the Maguna. Notice I've taken off the dust chute completely so we can have a better picture of what's happening. Now I've transferred over to the 1 8 inch bit. I've zeroed the bit here as I've done before. Don't need to repeat that. You can see how much of the carving is done at this time and the rest of the carving uh, will be taken care of with the 1 8 inch bit. And that's what we're getting ready to start right now. I am going to put the dust shoe on this time because it made such a mess with the other end mill. And I'm going to try to avoid it. So it's going to get loud now. I'm going to start up the dust collector and start the machine. This took about seven minutes uh, as compared to the Vectric, which said it would take about 20 minutes. And uh, so it was obviously quicker and I need to calibrate my Vectric. And we'll take a look at this closer. A couple things we need to do before we pour, uh, in case I don't get them on video, I want to capture them right now, is we need to clean all of this resin out. That's to make sure that we don't have any contaminants that come and float out and get into the middle of our epoxy after we pour it. I've heard a few people in the past um, ask me questions and said they had little white flakes or something in their epoxy. They didn't know where it came from. Uh, many times that will come from not having done a good job of, I'll call it decontaminating this before you pour the next coat. So you want to get all the loose epoxy out and make sure that you don't have any flakes left that could get in it. So I'm going to do that here in the next few minutes. So the first thing I want to do is vacuum out. So I get as much vacuumed as I possibly can. Then the next thing I do is I look inside of all of these little nooks and crannies and I make sure there's no leftover epoxy. I run my little scraper along the edge just to make sure there's nothing I don't see in there. This one carved exceptionally clean. I'm really happy with the carving on it. Looks like we've got the detail in there. If nothing breaks away after we pour it and then finish it, I'm pretty uh, happy with how I see everything looking in here. I'm checking all the little fine details to see if I see anything that uh, was a thin black that might have chipped out. And I don't see it. So this carving is looking pretty good. And actually, the, uh, it's very, very clean. I'll blow it out with some air, and then I'll take it upstairs, and we'll be ready to actually, uh, we'll be ready to actually pour. I like how that looks.
Well, that's the video for today. I hope you uh, learned some things. We started out with pouring the black coat of epoxy into the clear. I used three pigments, a black diamond pigment powder, mica powder. It had a little sparkle in it, but it's nice and dark. A Fire Dots Night pigment powder, which is uh, got some Fire Dots as the brand name, and Night is a color. It's got a little gray and silver in it uh, that uh, helped add to the swirl, and then Ecopoxy Liquid Black, which gave it the deep black background to also help with the swirl. I'll put that information in the description of the video. We discussed pouring and curing techniques of the black um, color to allow to produce a swirl pattern and also how to try and avoid bubbles. After that we discussed how to set up the white layer which has the most detail in this project and uh, we also then talked about how to validate that the cuts were going to be deep enough and how everything was set up. The, we discussed the vector calculator to get an estimated time for carving. That was about six hours by the vector calculator. In reality, it only took us about two to calibrate my vector uh, software. And that's because on my uh, Laguna controller, I can actually estimate the real time at the machine. We then carved into the epoxy and I revisited where you zero the bit which is in the same location every time. We discussed feeds and speeds associated with the bits that I use and in summary it's just the manufacturer's feeds and speeds for hardwoods. I also showed you some pictures of the chip load or the chips that were being produced to show that those were those uh, those feeds and speeds were working well. Once we carved the epoxy, finally I demonstrated the importance of cleaning uh, the epoxy carve and making sure there were no uh, contaminants, no floaters, or anything else that could ruin the next pour of epoxy. Tomorrow, we'll start out with the pouring of the white. We'll go through the pouring of the white then, and from there we'll go into the milling process of milling the, the epoxy to the level that you want and then finishing if everything goes well. Let's cross our fingers that we don't have anything that uh, gets uncovered during the milling process. Have a great day until we meet back in this forum again. Hope you're doing fine.